How do you make corn pork? Why do we still salt meats even though we have freezers? Why does this stuff give me heartburn sometimes? And why are the ones you get at the store so pink? Hey, I'm Nick and I will answer these plus a couple other questions in this video. If you're a big fan of some delicious stew peas, it's only fair you know what goes into making one of the main ingredients. I really enjoyed making this one so let's get right into it. This is fresh pig's tail with a bit of pork ribs, about 2.5 pounds total. You guys really wanted me to make stew peas and I will get to that in the next video. But first we need to make corn pork. Jamaican stew peas usually calls for pig's tail, corned beef or both. The first thing we have to do is get these pieces of meat smaller. That is really fresh. Salted meat was initially used for preservation. Long before refrigeration was introduced in Jamaica, freshly butchered pigs were packed in salt the same day to keep for sometimes up to months. With freezers and coolers, carning meat just became an unnecessary step in preservation because you could just put your fresh meat in the freezer and have it stay fresher for longer. Those are some good size, I'm placing them on a quarter sheet pan for easier handling. Despite all that, corn pork and other meats are still fairly popular. If you go to a Jamaican grocery store, you will see a wide range from pork, beef, turkey neck and even chicken neck. We don't need to salt meat but we still do it for one main reason and that's flavor. Salting changes the taste and texture of the meat and introduces characteristics you don't get from refrigeration. Speaking of flavor, we need some garlic. This is two heads of peeled garlic and I'm going to slice these just so I release more of that garlic flavor. This same salting recipe can also be used for other meats as I mentioned before like beef or turkey neck. Goat meat is really popular in Jamaica and maybe I'm wrong but I don't think we use to salt that. Goat is usually a special occasion, butcher it today and cook it today kind of thing. I also need two scotchy which I'm going to slice. This is a more traditional corn pork, most of the ones you find in the supermarket will not have as much flavor aside from salt. This is closer to how my grannies would have done it with lots of fresh herbs and spices. I'm also using a medium onion which I'm going to slice like the rest of the ingredients. Scallion is a popular ingredient in corn pork which I'm going to skip. I'm just using a few very prominent flavors, one of which is thyme. Fresh thyme is very important and all other types of thymes are a scam. That thyme flavor will carry right through to when we finally cook this. I'm removing as much of the leaves from the stem because that's where all the flavor is at. This is close to a cup of fresh thyme leaves. It's okay, you can overdo it with this recipe and don't have to worry. This only needs one more spice and it's arguably the most important one and that's dried pimento or allspice. You could even use pimento as the only flavoring in this recipe. I want to spread the flavor so I'm going to break down the dried berries with a mortar and pestle. Fresh pimento leaves were also used in the olden days, corn pork so this ingredient is pretty prominent. Doesn't have to be too fine, just break the dried berries. And that's all our herbs and spices but we need to talk about the most important ingredient for this to work and that's the salt. I'm using coarse sea salt but table salt in all its forms still work. A much coarser sea salt than this is what's traditionally used in Jamaica but I had a bit of trouble finding that. Now let's answer the initial question of why our salted or pickled meats is oftentimes pink or red. It's not food coloring or dyes although people do use that. It's all thanks to the curing salt used which usually has a pink hue. Curing salts are made from mostly table salt, sodium chloride and a very small percentage of sodium nitrite. Even though it gives meat that vibrant color, it's not the color of the salt but true chemical reactions. The pink hue is added to the curing salt only to distinguish it from regular table salt. You can get curing salt without the pink color and even without it the meat will still turn pink when you cure it. Curing salt should not be confused with pink Himalayan salt, they are not the same thing. Curing salt is also called prog powder. Prog powder number one for quick cures and prog powder number two for longer cures. You might even hear curing salt being called saltpeter which acts the same. You might see salted pig still labeled as pickled sometimes which is not entirely correct because pickling usually involves an acid like vinegar. Salting can also be combined with other curing methods like drying or smoking for a different flavor profile. I'm adding the seasons to the meat first for even distribution. This smells really good already. 
The nitrites in the curing salts have a lot more benefit aside from the color. It improves the texture, flavor and slows down the fats in the meat turning rancid. That's a lot of benefits but it is also poisonous in larger quantities and most curing salts have only between 0.5 to 0.9 sodium nitrate. I'm just mixing this up to coat each ingredient with all the seasoning. Next, I'm going to add the salt. I will start by coating each piece individually first and then give a general coat over everything. I want each piece of meat to be generously coated with salt. If in doubt, just add a little bit more. The salt will immediately start to draw out the moisture from the meat. That helps with preventing spoilage. The meat is effectively dried from the inside. I'll show you a bit later what I mean. Usually corn pork were put in plastic buckets and sealed but this should do it. I don't have any buckets. I'm going to pot this in the bowl with all the seasons and finally cover it with another layer of salt for extra insurance. Not enough salt and this will still go bad especially because I'm leaving it at room temperature. No, you could put this in the fridge and I highly recommend that. It will keep a lot better refrigerated but I really want to keep this as traditional and get what my granny's got so I'm keeping this at room temperature in a dark place. This kind of smell like jerk, the combination of scotchy, thyme and pimento usually does that. Alright, so I'm going to set this aside for about a week. I'll see you at the end of that. Nice, it's been a week and this is done. The first thing you will notice is the smell of the spices and pork. It has a really lovely aged flavor. Jamaicans like to talk about touch pork. This is not that. I'll tell you what touch is in a minute. You will notice that the meat is a lot more firm now and that's because the salt pulled out all the water from the pork. It's not a lot of water though because this is mostly bones. Whenever Jamaicans say pork is touch, it just means it's starting to go bad and it has some really funky flavors. Personally, I find that very repulsive but I know some people who really love it and prefer their pork touch. I am not some people. And again, this is not that and this actually turned out pretty great. I have some store bought salted pig's tail and you can see the vibrant pinkish red colors. It's not only visually very different from the homemade corn pork but it is way less flavorful. The curing salts used will give a better texture but the homemade salted pork is the all round winner. They are both very slick from the concentrated salt and the fats in the skin of the pork. I really love these results but one thing about salted meat is you have to get rid of the salt to actually eat it. The quickest way to desalt meat is to boil it in water until the salt level drops. This has the clear benefit of being very quick. The salt leaches out of the meat into the water, but unfortunately so does a significant amount of the flavor of the meat. If you spent your time and energy making homemade corn pork, you might as well try to retain as much of the flavor as possible and the best way to do that is soak the pork overnight. All I'm doing now is separating the pork from the liquid and seasons and I will give this a thorough wash to remove the salt from the outside of the pork. The thing about cured meats is the fat in the meat will still go rancid. Curing salt slow this down a bit compared to table salt. If eating stuff like salt mackerel and pig tail give you heartburn it's probably because of the high levels of fat going rancid. I really enjoy salt mackerel but avoid it for this very reason. No matter how delicious that mackerel rundown is, the hot burn afterwards will always ruin it. That's really firm. That's because of the salt. These are kind of big so I'm going to chop them up. Closer to serving sizes and that will also help to leach out the salt faster. If you smell this, you can tell the flavor really penetrated the meat. I'm still getting all the thyme and pimento flavors really strong. I'm going to place these in a bowl and add enough water to completely submerge them. That's maybe a little bit too much but let's run with it. I'm going to wrap this and place it in the fridge overnight to soak out most of that salt. We still want a little bit, don't want it completely fresh but it's still better to remove too much than too little. A night in the fridge should do the trick. I won't really know how much salt I remove from the meat until I taste it. 
I've seen people eat raw corn pork and it's probably safe but I'm not doing that. I'm not people. Unlike with boiling, it's mostly just salt that leached into this water. I will remove some of those pieces of fatty tissue and I'm also going to get rid of the water. Now that's ready, you can store this in the freezer or use it to make whatever dish you want. Make some brown soup pork, pepper pot soup or delicious stew peas like I will be making in my next video. I'll link it here when it's done so check that out. Oh and a big thanks to Brian for becoming a patron, I really appreciate it. Check the links in the description if you want to support the channel and I will catch you guys in the next one.